We'll invite them to come here to the high table. They introduce themselves and tell us what their priorities are. And from there, we'll select a few questions for our own end that we'll put to them. And we'll give each and every one of them equal time to answer. Because we want this thing to be very, very fair. Each one has to be given equal opportunity. For you the guys in the audience here, please put your phones on silent or you put them off. And maintain calm as far as possible and necessary. Because the idea is to provoke a discussion that will be meaningful really enough, not only to our kids, we need more life instead. Now, without much ado, we will call the candidates to come. All of them have been invited here, all the ten candidates. If somebody is not on stage here, it's not because he's not invited. Probably has his own reason of not coming. So we start with Debbie uh, Axi. Oh, let me make it clear. The arrangements here have nothing to do with whatever. We were randomly done. Somebody sitting here or sitting down there doesn't mean anything. It was <laughs> randomly done. Let's just be clear on that. <laughs> Rambo Jata, or oh, his representative, welcome to the stage. <laughs> Usman Rambo Jata of the APRC, not here. Francis George Gomez, independent candidate, welcome to the stage. Francis George Gomez, independent candidate, welcome. Senor Independent Candidate for AMC Mayor, welcome to the stage. <laughs> yes, Mr. Senor. Now we have Talib Ahmed Ben Suda. Asan Martin, independent candidate for the NMC. Asan Martin, independent candidate for the NMC. Anamba of the DDOIS. Mr. Jai 
Thank you very much, all the candidates present here, and thank you very much, all of you, for coming. As this one in this country, before we do anything, we start with prayers. And everyone, of course, in our own way, silent prayers. Thank you very much. Yes, just a brief intro about why we are here. Though we all know why we are here. Here at YES, the Anglican Television Service and the IEC and the civic group called Talks of Tomorrow came together to organize this thing give all the candidates the chance to interact with the electorate, sell their views and project their image and lay out their plans and to also give the electorate, that is the audience here, and the people outside down there will be watching the gauge and understand better what the candidates have in store for them. It's going to take time, it means they own up everything. We're going to just moderate and minimize our discussions because the key people here are you and the candidates. They'll tell us what they have for us. So without much ado, we start with a self-intro. Mr. Francis Gannis, you have two minutes to introduce yourself. By the way, I am Abdul I.C. of the ATL. Sorry. My name is Kuba Katsiakon, commonly known as Kuba uh, Sehwal. I was born in Sarakuna, London, in the year 1962. I attended my primary school uh, in Bangalore. I qualified as a personal college to Bangalore, French school. From there, I proceeded to university, then to Carolina. From there, I attended many courses. I was very much passionate about development, so I developed myself by the social work. So I did management course at the MBI, the 
recently completed my postgraduate for public activity. I'm a social worker by profession. I'm uh, part of those who initiated many NGOs about three, per se, one of which have been contributing towards food service research and education for the you access to food service research and education, which emanated from Gambia Youth Federation that was created during the First Republic in 1985 when it was declared International Year of Youth. By then, there was no national youth policy or national youth council guidance. We decided to take it within ourselves by our initiating a national youth organization. But it was rejected. We changed it to Gambia Youth Federation. Uh, we by trade, I studied in the University of Toronto in Canada. My municipal experience is that I worked with the Mississauga City Council in Canada. I came home in 2010 where I worked as a marketing manager for Takapo Insurance up to the rank of Deputy MD. And today I am a candidate for UDP for KMC 2018. Uh, I'm a businessman, 
I have almost 30 years business experience and I think I'm the only potential candidate uh, who have no political skill or political affiliation. I was born in Serekunda Baptist, brought up in Ebo Town, that is where I live until now. Um, I did uh, law at the GTI, uh, management at MDI, as well as um, did the uh, uh, University of Ghana, two years at the University of Ghana, and uh, one year with World Bank for organizational management. And I've worked 12 years with the chapter of Finalians as um, head of programs for 12 years, and uh, during those times, I've worked in different places. I was a nominated councillor between 2008 and 2013 in KMC, and at the same time, head of finance committee of the council. And I've also spent time with JRTS as a news editor for 18 months, and uh, being part of the National Youth Council for six years, and uh, moved out in 2016, and I was working with the uh, US agency for the Spiritals in Kentucky for 18 months and came back in October 2017 to run for the mayor of the local language. That's why we took the party here in Kirikara. Some of the official names that we part out in there, Judo Banjo, Premier Banjo Primary School, Fuaye, Dubia for them, Senegal, Kaula, the High School, the Form 5, Dubia for them, proceed to the U.S. Company day for Fusuma High School graduation, Duba University, then for two years, but in 1976, Nitsibanyu, negative business, the Yapalis Mobile for the Yapam, the Yapam, the 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 Yapam, the Yapam, the the Yapam, 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 the Nurani, Hamale, Mangi Tahauti, GTC ticket, the Lenyan, Yen Four candidates here, Pogmane, Mangan Bosan. Aslam Alekum, my name is Mohammed Musan Jai, but commonly known as Papa Jai. I went to Senegal since high school on a government scholarship. I went to England and I studied and I got my master's in economics. Then I came back and I've been around for 22 years. And whilst I was here for 22 years, I worked for the government uh, under the planning department. Then I moved and went for I went and worked for um, uh, National Women Farmers Association. And then from there I went and worked for the um, Gambia Investment Promotion and Free Zone Agency. I was the director of investment promotion and marketing. And my role there was to go out and uh, take investors and uh, take investors to invest in Gambia. There on, I went and worked for the uh, American Embassy for eight years. I was the um, education advisor, press assistant, culture affairs assistant. During that time, I worked with a lot of young people, artists, and I worked uh, to promote democracy and human rights in Gambia. There on, I went and uh, started my own business called Digital Planet. I was there for two years, and I was there to help um, uh, market from um, uh, Samsung products. During that time, what I did was I took fresh graduates from high school and I trained them, and some of them are now in high positions. There on, I went and worked for UNESCO. For UNESCO also, I started my own NGOs, and I'm also a private businessman. I come here with an experience of 24 years, come and transform KMC from what it was to the next level. Very good. Uh, what is very interesting. And here, okay, now we can start. Now, this time we're going to speak with you, Mr. Jai. What is your top priority? You can become lucky and you are mayor of the planet in the municipality. Uh, thank you very you much. You have three minutes to do that. Thank you very much. I'm the um, candidate. I will be the sharp now. So let's move forward. Um, <laughs> my top priority is uh, um, good governance. Um, I think um, that's very important. Good governance talks about how uh, the country operates, how we operate, and make it more efficient. 
I'm not talking about reducing rates, I'm talking about making it more efficient through technology which is uh, reducing the banking system. And um, if we do not plan properly, we will not be able to move forward. And urban planning is a priority. Urban planning, we can now start talking about um, uh, hospitals, the roads, the feeder roads, the lights, the street lanes. That is a priority to me. And of course, um, uh, doing that planning also, we will uh, make sure that uh, we have affordable homes. Those affordable homes that will target people who are uh, from the low income uh, bracket. And um, um, the other area that I'm most interested in um, that is very important is um, creating job opportunities for young people. Here yeah, I'm talking about um, uh, creating enterprises through the um, um, established activities that we have, um, uh, like through using sports as a business. And uh, because sport is very important for young people, and we have to um, get somebody who understands sport so that um, we will invest in sport. One area there which is important, which I want to discuss with everybody, is that um, let's take the South Korean football field. Um, uh, um, the front gate is a prime property. Imagine if we are able to build um, 30 stores there, average 30 stores, you rent it out for uh, half a million dollars. In a year, you get 50 million dollars. And that 50 million dollars can go to uh, into developing sports. That's one of the areas in sports. Education is also very important, which is a priority. And my philosophy now is we have to predict. Yeah, we have one minute. Enough. Yes, it's okay. Um, education is very key. We have to uh, structure the scholarship by um, uh, in, in such a way that um, it, it, we have to try to see, like in the next 10 years or 5 years, what are job opportunities, opportunities do we need in KMC and then go back to the drawing board and start offering scholarship to those um, uh, job opportunities that we want to create. And finally, um, 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 access is important, security is important, uh, waste management is, is a priority, and of course we have to um, uh, be partners with businesses because with them we can do a lot of public social responsibilities. Thank you very much. That's it so much. Yeah, yeah, so question, I'm not sure at all. It's my top priority, my back on the top side. Uh, for this kind of work, it's the Japan gate to the knock in from there, this from there, and you might need to go back on the back of the room. But look, you know, you're next to my top priority. When you get to Lolo, candidates get more and more as a program, man and no problem program, link there to the Putin, put in the film maker, more innovations, I tell you what that's as a businessman, I don't if you have a lot of people who are not going to be able to do to be able to do this, you Because we believe that um, the council needs to be to be reformed uh, institutionally, but also in terms of the taxation system that we have, so that we are able to ensure that we encourage businesses in the municipality and especially those uh, small businesses, and as well as them, so that the big business also are able to flourish. The second thing is about uh, environment and sanitation. It's a priority. We need to ensure that uh, municipality is clean, and by that we need to invest in the in the clean environment by getting the required manpower and the, if the vehicles to ensure that we have our weekly uh, refuse collection in the municipality. And the third is about uh, infrastructural development. Our municipality is the center of the Gambia. There is need for us to have very good roads, roads that are uh, uh, I mean, feeder roads and uh, be able to ensure that we have some good drainage system within the municipality. And the third and uh, fourth is the issue of uh, youth and women empowerment. We know our economy is driven by these two sectors of society, but somehow they are neglected by the programs that we have and we want to ensure that uh, they are supported. 
And the fifth one is the issue of sports and uh, culture. Uh, is one key issue that we can be able to, to create employment for, for young people and for women. We have a group of people who are interested in football and basketball. How do we ensure that our facilities are up to standard? How do we ensure that our young people are, are encouraging the things that they do? And of course, we have people who are interested in music and those who are interested in theater. That is a way of creating employment. Unfortunately, our government in the past and presently have neglected this sector. So we want to ensure that KMC becomes a pay shedder and ensuring that um, all these areas are supported. So that if you can provide direct employment to people, you can be able to ensure that you support them in the things that they do and that we can employ for them. So these are our priorities and this is what we think KMC should engage in so that in the next four or five years it becomes a municipality that everybody will be happy to live in. My post hundred days in office, yeah. I will be fine about strategies and going to states. I will try and digitalize the yeah. I will try and digitalize the KFC billing system. I get the database so that all the billing system will be digitalized. Uh, Thirdly, I will work with MDI. I will have MOU with MDI and capacity building of the KFC staff so that all the tax collectors will know exactly the money that they are collecting and where to put it, and the use of the money. Thirdly, I will try and work on rubbish collections. Firstly, I will work with the media houses so that we will sensitize people on what rubbish are that we can uh, minimize it. Secondly, facilitate how to facilitate the rubbish. And thirdly, how to have a MOU with uh, uh, how to call it, investors so that we can recycle the waste. Thank you. What you need really is to know what is available within KMC. What you need really is to have a strong resource mobilization team because we all know that the resources are key in any form of development. We need a strong team. The Act tells you that you should have a technical advisory committee and part of that technical advisory committee, you can co-opt people with the technical expertise like financiers, like development experts to be part of your team so that they can advise the council and the councillors and the mayor on the way forward. Also, what you need is correct institutional development. You cannot go behind developing that institution. Now that means, in all the wards, we should make sure that the grassroots are in touch with their own development. Do an assessment of what the wards need. And you can only do this through the councillors. The Act tells you that what you need is a development, a three-year development plan. How do you build a three-year development plan? You can only build a three-year development plan if all the councillors on the ground will be provided at least with the facilities. You provide them with an office. You provide them with the various things that they need within the wards. And they should assess within their wards the top priorities that they should bring to the council. This is how the KMC should be organized. It should be organized in such a way that the grassroots are in touch with their own development and they are responsible for their own development. You can only do this by building the institutions that are in place. You can only do this by people actually telling the, their councillors what their problems are. You start from there. And then the next day is you develop a three-year development plan with all the councillors, develop a project, that's the next thing because the Act tells you by September 30th, before September 30th, the mayor should actually assess the resources of the KMC. And the next thing is to develop a budget. You cannot develop a budget in isolation with the, from the councillors. So what I keep on telling our colleagues here is do not go ahead of the councillors. You work very closely with the councillors so that you develop a three-year development plan you develop a budget together, 
then you can move the KMC to a direction that is acceptable to the people of KMC. We have to make sure services and resources are delivered as of right. This is why I am here. The first 100 days will be for you. Yeah, um, also, I will look at the stakeholder conference to make sure that downside, the waste management issue comes into play. Most importantly, I personally will be involved in the congest that traffic, that traffic, road traffic, transport, transportation that leads to the Serekunda Serekunda Avenue. So I am your person to make sure that things are done effectively, efficiently, and nobody is going to sustain you. Expect that leadership from me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So I would like to start by saying all the panelists here agree on the same issues. All the Gambians agree on the same issues. These issues are we face big challenges, environmental challenges, infrastructure challenges, economic growth and job creation challenges. This is no secret. But we have to stop and ask ourselves, why hasn't the council tackled these challenges? I think this is this should determine what our priority should be. Number one should be, is the capacity there? Number two should be, is the money available? I intend to go into the council in the first hundred days to see how they have developed a hundred million dollars in debt. The council does have a big debt on their hands. Secondly, I want to look at the capacity available. Definitely, the council needs restructuring. We need checks and balances, corporate governance. Some have mentioned. But more interestingly, why is the revenue base not being fully exploited? Where is the revenue going? Is it being collected at all? So I think all Gambians agree that we face the same challenges. But why haven't they, they been tabled? In my first 100 days, I will ensure I restructure the council and find ways to build the budget to tackle these problems. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I think, uh, like all our panelists have rightly stated, we have big challenges as far as the municipality is concerned. But the approaches will be different as far as strategies are concerned. I think for me, my major thing is first and foremost to make sure that you know we have a, a united people within the municipality, with 
is very important because if you don't have people with one vision and one direction, that will be very hard to uh, develop uh, as a municipality. Secondly, uh, I think uh, my main point is to make sure that we depoliticize council as far as local government decentralization is concerned. Because when we make sure about decentralization, we are mentioning power of the people. That is, the people have to make their decision. That will lead me to the third point. That is to make sure that the necessary structures are in place to make sure that they represent the people at their own locality so that they can make their respective budget. Because as far as council and the mayoral position is concerned, the decision should come from the people, not from the top. It should be from below going to the top. Being the case, the necessary structure should be put in place so that they will be able to deliver the necessary goods as far as the council is concerned. Then the third point is to make sure that we give them good reorientation because all what we are seeing is about attitude. Attitude is very important because if people, you know, don't have good attitude, so to say, then we cannot develop, we cannot organize, we cannot have the necessary finances. I think it's equally important for people, soon you need, then you are to go. The other point is uh, revaluation. We have to revaluate the, the, the assets, the properties that the municipality have. We have to have uh, value of the existing properties that are existing within the municipality so that we can know. The fourth point is to invite stakeholders. Because council alone, we cannot do it. Unless we bring stakeholders, we do it with them be it on environment, be it on economic, be it on social work. The women, they should be given priority and use. Sports, uh, microcredit finance, and so forth, and so forth. Water, sanitation, liquid and solid waste should also be addressed. So you have solid waste, they now want money. Why should we have liquid waste? We are not talking of uh, 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 drainage. We are not talking of sweet kawaii. Nakane yandi empty. You, you, you know, you need to have the you need to have the money, you need to have the money, the money, you need to have 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 the money, you need to Thank you, Mr. Mugere. Um, in my first hundred days in office, I know I'm uh, I'm impressed that you know all the contributions here you know seems to be you know almost one and the same. Everybody is concerned for the development of the and by the municipality and the people you know they are in, you know in their lives and in their you know I mean no workplace. That's very impressive, but. I will not buy too much, you know, I mean, that I cannot chew. So for the first, you know, 100 days, I will concentrate on the economic and social development of the municipality. Which means, you know, I mean, we have to look at, you know, I mean, you know, the, the, um, uh, the economic, you know, situation, you know, I mean, you know, within, and the work ethics, you know, I mean, you know, they are in, you know, with the staff. TMC is not, you know, I mean, it's not um, uh, run by you know, the staff you know, I mean, at KMC alone, but the people also has a contribution because you know, they are there to you know, create service you know, to the people. So there should be a public-private partnership you know, between the two factors. And as a result, there must be an understanding between these two I mean, factors. The staff at the KMC also, it is incumbent on the you know, system that you know it puts you know the necessary work you know policies to encourage them and bring them you know to perform. They have to devise you know I mean you know, situations where you know I mean the staff is not tempted by all by by any, you know by any means or in any way to involve in any unscrupulous practices. Number two, the staff, you know, I mean, you know, out there must be provided with the necessary gear, you know, I mean, you know, to do their work correctly. And here I am con concentrating on the, you know, cleansing service. These are all areas that, you know, I mean, you know, we need to address. So that they could, you know, I mean, you know, then 
provide the services necessary, you know, I mean, you have one minute to go. Okay. There has been a lot, you know, that has been said, but the downside is also one thing. The congestion, you know, at the epicenter of, you know, the municipality and on the roadside has to be, you know, I mean, addressed. And I think from experience, and, you know, I mean, my focus in which period I have delivered to turn this dump site, this very dump site that is being talked about, into an area, you know, which was even thought of, you know, as football field or any. Not to mention, you know, I mean, the road, you know, I mean, you know, from where to Sobuda. And also, the refuse has been collected. And this time around, you know, we will have to engage. We will now try to, you know, I mean, bring in some financial incentives for the, for the, for the refuse that is being collected from the compounds, you know, and those big ones. Good morning, everybody. Um, my candidate has a political manifesto. I have about 15 bullet points, which I'm going to sum up. Um, it deals with infrastructure, it deals with education, it deals with health and social services. It deals with empowerment, rights of the child, women, and the disability. These are areas that he really highlighted as his priorities that he's going to focus on when he gets into office. And um, one thing I know that is someone who got experience of council, because he served as a council for 10 years. So I know he got experience of council, and he has provided services to his people when he was before and when he was a councillor, which some of the people in this high table can test who have worked with him as a councillor. Um, and I believe that he has the capacity, because I've worked with him in council, he has the capacity to deliver when he's in the office, because I knew he has a lot of potentials that he can exploit to make sure that the municipality moves forward based on policies and programs that have been laid. Let remember that uh, the operations of council is based on um, legal instruments that are already been designed by this country. That is the local government act and the financial audit act that dictates the operations of council. And he being okay with those policies, I know and I believe he will excel to the level where the municipality rates its development. If you look at his manifesto, it's well detailed, it's all inclusive. Therefore, I believe that electing Usman Rambo Jata into office, he will definitely, in his three um, hundred years in office, in his hundred days in office, he will review the policies that are already in place and then address the capacity needs. But there is, needs, there is, more, there is improvement need to be done in terms of capacity at council level. And I know also in his uh, manifesto, He's going to address also the improve, improvement on um, revenue performance, transparency, and accountability. These are issues that he has highlighted in his manifesto. And I believe if he, um, when he's in the office, he will definitely deliver to the expectations of the people of this municipality. Thank you. Well, I mean, we're going to stay with you. We're going to stay there. Uh, we're going to ask one person. The candidate is going to answer that. Then we go to the floor. Now, uh, all of you have mentioned your priorities, and they all seem to be very lofty and very fine. It seems as we are all on the same level, very homogeneous. Everyone wants to do great. Okay, and it is very good. We are glad that we have people who want to do great. But there is one thing we need to understand if we can do these great things the limitations of the municipality. As a mayor, there are things you can do and there are things that are in the domain of the central government. Now, Mord Lamin, if Rambo becomes mayor, does he understand these challenges? That there are things within the domain of the central government that the mayor of the country's municipality cannot do for the municipality. The answer is yes. Simply because I said it earlier on that he has served as a council member for 10 good years. So he has the capacity, he got the knowledge, and he knows the laws that govern the operations of council. So therefore, I know if he's elected in the office, he knows his limitations, and he's going to adhere to the provisions of the laws 
that governs your presence of country, which is very much a favor. What are some of the limitations? Um, when it comes to inf uh, road infrastructure, he is not supposed to deal with major roads. He is supposed to deal with um, um, secondary roads, which he knows very well. When it comes to health, he is only limited to work on the primary health care, which he knows very well. Uh, when it comes to um, education, you know, he knows that council has a limit when it comes to education, supporting the education sector. That is by only funding the school that we have already built as a council and also providing scholarships to needy students, which he is projecting that he's going to provide scholarships to the up to the university level for the people of the municipality, which I know these are things that we definitely want to go into and will help in addressing the challenges that the social society is facing. <laughs> Yes, the question is, uh, you want to do great, but if you, on the platform, you want to do great for free and see, what are things that you can do? Those are the domain of the central government. How are you going to negotiate that difficult road? Yes, um, it's in the same thing that you know, I mean, I'm speaking to. Because, you know, local government, as we all understand it, is an arm of government. So it's not something, you know, that is away on its own, for standing, you know, as an island. So obviously, Things like security, you know, if you want to go into it, you know, I mean, you would have to, like, you know, the municipal policy, you would have to work with government, you know, through the Ministry of um, uh, Interior, I mean, uh, with the police to ascertain that. So that is something that we will be doing. Also, you know, as an arm of government, you know, we, we cannot be acting internationally without, you know, I mean, getting, you know, their consent to the foreign office or their you know, I mean, or thereby. So these are all things, you know, I mean, within the frame of the Global Government Act and the financial, you know, I mean, you know, act, you know, that matter, which we are all, you know, I mean, following. But it goes to say in the same vein that local government administration is an arm of government which is trying to help it, you know, address, you know, help it address the fundamental, you know, uh, grassroots problems, which it cannot be involved because of, you know, its national and international, you know, commitments. Therefore, you know, I mean, it is prudent to say we cannot act, you know, I mean, alone, you know, I mean, you know, in respect of you know, putting, you know, the central government, you know, I mean, aside. We have to, you know, I mean, you know, we have to be seen to be working, you know, side by side. In, in fact, we are from this very prime we are from the very, you know, I mean, you know, uh, base of, you know, I mean, you know, the central government to help, you know, am ameliorate and mitigate the circumstances on the class. I mean, you know, class 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 class. Class. Thank you very much. Uh, decentralization which is a program of itself, a concept that is meant for empowering the people, that is meant for the local people, that's why it is called local authorities. And I think as far as devolution of power is concerned, that the wealth, the power and authority should be given to the people through the councils. This is why we are saying decentralization. Even though there are some bottlenecks, which I think the local authorities also should perform better so that at the end of the day, the central government will have the confidence to make sure that this power, wealth and authority is given to the local authorities so that they can deliver to the people. That is why I said earlier on that council needs to be depoliticized. It should be neutral so that it will be able to serve the people. Liberal was a local boy. Local government authority, go go put me nila, dole me nila, fupuna ni ni amesen dole. Ken waru lena wa, nakarang wara yugo se keri wala se nili. Nyom nyom wara wa loro. Nyom amren bete nyom inen ag gugur johlen dole. Johlen kadu, johlen lua. Supaya dia fikir lua ini, anda lua yang hamil, ni ni nyok sen bapa, nyok nyok kuat peral sen bapa. Wah lua ini kenapa gugur di mukut kuat peral sen bapa kuat arne. Bukan dia fikir nak, ni ni sen bapa, nyok nyok je lua yang dulu, ad dole yang, ad lenyok face nama, injeri nyok kuat kurdhal mumunar le. 
Si vous avez fait un bon temps, vous avez un projet qui est un projet qui est un local qui est un projet 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 qui est un D'avoir pour nous, nous avons participer. Nous avons participé. 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 Nous Hello? Um, this is a good question. This is a good question. So the reason local governments are in place is for better service to the community. This is why we have councillors representing wards uh, in the entire KMC. So they know what people feel in those wards, their needs, in order to have them satisfied, in order to have basic services. Now, local government is actually an independent body from government. It has autonomy. However, it is under the supervision of the Ministry of Local Government and the Office of the President. But that doesn't mean they control local government. I think every mayor needs to understand this. The only, the only explicit restriction I see in the Local Government Act is with HR, is with the hiring and firing of administrative, the administration of the KMC. Uh, this is done by the Local Government Service Commission, which is under the supervision of the Ministry of Local Government. So local government has the independence, has the financial independence, has the right to go source for funding and international partnerships independent of the central government. So what the Act does say is government starts, central government starts where local government stops. So I think um, the, uh, the Local Government Act encourages the independence of uh, the local government administrative area because it is an independent jurisdiction. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. Um, and to tell you the fact, um, as a legal mind, I have looked at that act, the act that binds, that act that doesn't allow our institution, the council, to function and deliver services and resources. That act, um, section 14, needs to be amended. The mayor needs not only supervise or preside, he needs to have an executive power, take responsibility, and know that decisions are made. Another section that I have looked at is section 42 of that act. The CEO, a mayor, can find a very fine gentleman who is comfortable to work with so that they can achieve their goals and policies and foster policy. I have looked at also another section of that act that 25% of the development budget. Under my mayorship, I'm a fighter and I have been fighting for you Gambians for long since. I will keep fighting so that central government will roll back give you at least, not 25%, but at least I'll add an extra 10%, that is 35%, to give you resources. But again, um, come back to what I um, mean, decentralization means. Um, I am having what they call community-based development projects. I will make sure community health centers, community post office, community centers, community facilities, and then community transportation are put in place. I am a, um, and somebody who believes that I should work hard so that these gentlemen around me can find a better foundation that they can build on and move <laughs> and so forward.
Decentralization means it's more like empowering the people so that they can come up with their own decisions for development. But at the same time, the act provides that there is return on investment, which means you can actually invest, the council can invest. And the council does not have to do it alone. The council can invest in collaboration with the private sector. It is given that mandate to do that. So when I become the mayor, what I will do is to make sure that we don't depend only on taxes. We all know that the businesses here in this country are tired of being taxed. The people are tired of being taxed. We need innovation, we need creativity, so that we can find other avenues of making money for the council. And that is key in the development of that council. We should make extra resources, not by depending on only taxes, but also finding other avenues of making money. One area, of course, in terms of investing and the council making money from it. I am very experienced in establishing cooperatives. Right. Right. I have done that. You must have heard about the Gambia is a good project, project which I brought into this country. Now, the Gambia is good project, what it's doing is you are allowed to get involved in agricultural projects. Those, those are decentralized projects you can negotiate with, with government. Now all these women with their narcos, you can yeah, actually okay, help okay, them come and get their approach. Yeah, so okay. Do the hotels and okay. other areas where okay. that, that is possible to okay. appropriate. You can also invest in bonds or treasury bills no, no. as a council. No. The council must find businesses okay. here okay. are overtaxed. Okay. There is no benefit coming. Yes, yes. <laughs> Par exemple, le monde de la cour pour moi, il y a un dictée taxe, ça ne veut pas dire. Il y a un copier social d'investissement, il y a un copier social d'investissement, il y a un copier social d'investissement. Il y a un copier social d'investissement, 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 il y a Yo yo kanso le fumo le fara do bangkos iso ti mbor be bangsi bangsi ange yus yo 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 so da mena por for example bangsi ange fe 75000 patir ti kanso du moy kanso bu neka mom la bangsi di fe kanso du 75000 da pour til bu neka yo be bu ni man man ligue kan la ni nga xamne mom na to ko le da fa des ban lew ban drive la am da fa re litu bagi do di skill and will to fi da am na am na university graduate Je suis allé au Sénégal, 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 je Problem. 
I think we all agree that uh, there are limitations you know, is for the, the local government. I think that um, uh, there is uh, councils are not really doing all the things that they're supposed to do because uh, in the act it's also mentioned that um, there should be a pollution process, uh, decentralization where council have roads. The only thing is that the central government is still uh, holding on to the roads that are asked for the act have been given to the local government. And that's one thing that uh, the, the councils of the Indian Democratic Dispensation should push forward so that their roles are given to them as for the local government. And the rest of the other things is, is uh, we are in agreement that um, indeed um, road construction, health, education, quite a number of other things are at the central government level. And council, of course, is coordination. And personally, me running as a mayor and I'm in the council, I've read the act and I've done training for this local government uh, council on the act. I know very well that. Are not limited. Councils are autonomous to raise their money, to spend it anyhow they want, as, uh, for, uh, as agreed by the, the country. The only thing is that um, in the past, the leadership have not really uh, looked at other ways of raising revenue because it's not just about that. You have uh, grants from the local government. Our central government is not coming for many years. The uh, local councils have at least came, they have not received the, the surveys that have come from the central government. But councils can go into <laughs> in development what they call it. Uh, private public partners like let's say in a development for instance if you want to construct a market you don't have the money but you have construction companies here that can come and sit down with you and say okay we can bring down the of now market and build a proper structure and uh, you take care of your rates and you take care of um, the, the collection so eventually maybe after five years or ten years you will have recovered the money that you have spent and the, the property belongs to council so and then you also have the other way where you can do funds outside you have agencies like UN Habitat, you have UNEP on environmental programs. EMC can lobby funds from those agencies. I think the issue is we've not really had that kind of leadership to be able to lead us through the process. <laughs> I know I am just one plan and to provide people to know that I'm a Let me invite you to come here on behalf of Rambo. This is a mayoral debate. That's right. That's very right. You are the real man. Bigger. Bigger, yes. That's the truth.
dugu ci KMC euh KS ñoñu nak nga lendi mëna dimbalé kon do lay wara la jaar li nga xamné dañ ko jëlé KMC jox ko central government ñu délo ko fa KMC ñoo ko mo lool nak liñu ko indi yépp du kër ko du KMC Gouvernement bu ESD nga xamné ñepp ak taka sen diga tek leen fa ñu délo doole di fam nekkol ndax ñoomit ñuy liggéey ñu ni suñu loxay mëna fré bu liggéey lool la am ci lima tortu ci question bi la benen ñoo non di ben ñoo wara tang ay nga fi di raay What we are trying to say, um, just about two or three weeks ago, most of those um, um, sections were they were amended. But if I'm going back to the office, I can But people don't know about what's the essence. Yeah, so now what is happening is nobody, the president cannot start, mayor cannot start, cannot start. But that needs to be made public. No, the law has been changed now. But people don't know about it. I think I think people don't know. We need to we need people don't know about it. Gandhian Sanat Gandhian Remember the law about it. 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 Remember the law about decentralized <laughs> amul ci action to our land land bi dañ ko wara dañ ko wara mom ko dafay mëna develop it's very very important the way it is now land bi we have to go to local government to allocate the land nak nga develop it nak nga expand it possible um nak nga amé xor municipality bi amul ci chat department tour da fa wor da fa rom okay we cannot rely on other ministry We got uh, the new house with our staff and the high and five to start with. We have to separate that. So you need autonomy. Autonomy is complete autonomy. Financial, political, social, political autonomy. Don't let go so far. Absolutely. Don't let go so far. I'm a councillor. Councillor, mayor, the government, the government, the government, the executive power. We need a leader. We need a small government. That's very important. The other point, we need to is very vital. We need to look at it. Currently, the revenue collected are paid to the central government. No, nothing has happened. That is wrong. All the money should go back to the um, to the council. No money is to own money. Yo, I'm going to see. I'm going to come. Mayo, don't want to hire a CEO. CEO be more of a dollar. No, no, that's all wrong. To get council, to get that KMC develop powers to go back to the people and to the people through the mayor and council. That is very important. Am am na nyuro wa BPP is very important again lord so ko wara ta ko meta ma sa that is wrong ma lu ma wone rek su fekke na suma ay se ay tan juman bi su ñu joxon ak ni am ku de bi ko ko na kon question ci ne ko rek ci as it stands this is a good the act is not favorable to the development of KMC the act is not favorable to the movement of am um, of the uh, of, of KMC so Lola and Rwanda we join together just a reminder yes. is the Kanifi municipality is here that is organized by the internet uh, commission IEC KRTS the Meridian Television in collaboration with folks of Morocco the civic organization I am Abdullah IEC now we're going to go to the floor
Local government at the end, but no, man, how much of the money? Local government at the end, but no, man, I decided to come here to witness as everybody else the debate because I am a citizen, a resident of Kanibe municipality. So that was really my intention, but I think I'm compelled by circumstances to say something. Call of Duty. Of course, Call of Duty, yes. I'm not as many members have been uh, said by someone. Uh, what we did was, well, now the executive, the president cannot remove the chairperson or mayor from office. But I think the essence is the devolution that um, we're talking about. The executive still has a degree of control over the council because budgets are approved by the minister. So uh, that element is still there. Uh, there is need for local government reform. And I think whoever is coming into office, there is need to consult with society, with legislature, to ensure that the necessary reforms that we are sanctioned by the constitution in 19, uh, uh, 1997 constitution, you know, uh, really realized that we need total evolution, we need total decentralization of councils. Mm -hmm. Councils should be really in charge of the resources and decide how they spend their resources. Of course, in consulting him, so that he'll bring the, the act. So that he'll bring the act. Keep it simple and straight to the point, and let's avoid personalities. Here is a battle of ideas. Let's concentrate on that. Yes, question from one side, then yes. they will answer it. Then they go to the other guy. You know, one person at a time, just one, then the candidates will try to answer that. Yes, would you like to introduce yourself first? Good uh, afternoon, everyone. Yes, My name is L.A.J.J. Mendy. Don't be afraid. <laughs> L.A.J.J. Mendy. Commonly called John Mendy. I'm a, first, I want to ask a question direct to one of the aspirants. And this question goes to Mr. Gomez. I saw in your flyers and t shirts. What have you done? <laughs> have you sat in the as acting men that others do not do in their full term of five years or more? Why do you claim to be experienced when you ask acting men for only eight months? Okay, thank you. That is not too many to answer. Yeah, it's funny, all right. Two minutes, please. Two minutes. The death range is from 1996 to 2006, where I act as deputy mayor of the Second Republic. And we have seen the emergence of the meaning of, you know, I mean, the connecting or the meaning of, you know, what council is all about. We have seen the meaning and the concept help over council to the extent that everybody knows exactly why you are there. Roads have been built, clean pond, clean pipe pond waters have been, you know, I mean, you know, established in the communities with the assistance of, you know, the UNDP. Schools have been built. Lives have been uh, education sponsorship has been done. Markets have been built, and people 
have been helped in every way possible that they came, you know, with their question to the, to the council. That's the you know, area of the death. That's 1996 to 2006. The effort is the request now to come back again and complete the job that has been started. We have seen the dump site at a time when it was not a very favorable site to see. In fact, it was an eyesore. But it was turned over within these eight months from 2006 to 2007, from September. You know, can you look at the other side? Which is now not even mandatory, but is is um, is optional by government. So these are this is what we can get clarification to. And then the issue of um, sacking. Um, I think one need to understand the sacking is not when you are in the mayor. The president has passed to sack a mayor. The president sacks you as a member of his party. Automatically, you lose your position as a mayor. And not because you are the mayor, he sacks you as the mayor. No. He always sacks you from his political party, and when you are sacked from a political party, you will be sacked from No, the Banyu mayor. When it comes to, if you want to describe it, it has a democracy. It has a democracy. It has a democracy. That tells you the population of KMC, which is over 300,000. It tells you that KMC lies between the banks of the Atlantic Ocean and Banyu. And then, you know, these are few things that you want to say because time is our enemy. <laughs> but I can tell you that I'm very okay with everything that this will come. Where are the ladies? Where are the ladies? Where are the ladies? He went to court and challenged it, got the trash out of the this, some of this, no more that can so much develop because if you ask so many big news to be in the Thailand for some reason. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. My question goes to Charlie, but I will speak in Wolof. Charlie, I am a local like my as a Gambian, new Nigerian Gambian. Local government acts being calm. Local government may have been in New Jubilee. It was not your intention to not have. Why look at you on the ticket of UDP mayor of me? The KMP Hamula, Gavara Yota House.
Why give the journalist man to ask questions? Uh, the question that I want to ask the Ashkari uh, within all the, uh, with all the debates that I had them talking about here, what they want to do for TMC, I haven't had any candidates talking about disabilities. Do you have any plan for those people? Yes, and that's a general question for all of them. Let's start with Ramajai. Yes, Muhammadu Musanjai. He was just asking, what plans have you guys for people with disability? Um, thank you very much. I, uh, my um, uh, son, my father will come. Um, for over 15 years, I've been working with uh, with the differently able people. Mm -hmm. At Napo, the part Napo, where everybody was sad. I was <laughs> So, <laughs> 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 so, 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 Housing scheme Buma plan, they will also be allocated some housing. So, first, available, they should be paid every month. You know, they can afford that. Put a gap in the community. What are the council now? One of the bylaws is to make sure every public institution in KMC, Ghana, and public access to the district and to the different table and public toilets. So come get you charge that combat that is a toilet and the um, uh, toilets and the disabled codes. That is a must. And finally, one of the nominated members must, should, will be from the people with different tables. Thank you very much. I'll be the first one, so now we're going to nominate. I'll be five members. Women. Uh, thank you. 
Uh, well, one thing is clear, I think we personally, and that's what I always talk about, that our program is, is written and it's publicized. So uh, there is no, nothing like uh, you are here and the actual question is not thinking about what you say, because um, <laughs> seven months ago we publicized our <laughs> Absolutely. And right in there we have mentioned in two points that um, the issue of disability, and we have said, that, uh, that they, the people with disabilities are supported with skills, with education, and also the infrastructure that will be constructed or rehabilitated will take care of those people who are sitting on wheelchairs and people who have uh, all kinds of disabilities. That, that is fair. And uh, my history, working with uh, 12 years with the Chapters and Alliance, also uh, linked me up with uh, the Department of Welfare and with all these uh, uh, differently able organizations. <coughs> That's why in this campaign, I have visited GAPCOP, that's the Gambia Association of the Hard of Hearing. I have visited Provi, that's the Gambia Association of Visually Impaired. And I've had a meeting with the Gambia Federation of the Disabled during the time of our campaign. And this is just to, to reiterate that uh, we are personally concerned about it. And today, we're talking about um, the Disability Act. I am proud to say that I am part of the people who drafted that the, the draft Disability Act before it was taken to, to the So, I, I, I was part of the body. Group for the disability, and I was representing CPA for two years, working with the UNDP in the disability project. So this is something that I am personally concerned about, and certainly um, it's something that we consider. And, uh, yeah. So let me just stop there. Thank you. Like, for example, the Lima Guamoy, the Warrior Young Tri Disability, the Facilitated Gangan Limnichi, the Hamne, a lot of things to Hamne, which is one that's more than control, the Cassius, still a lot of old days, and the Morotanka, and the old days. The Council of Lima Moy, Mayor Tomorato, for you are the one that are Sociétés <coughs> え、I, I would choose to call them determined people. Uh, I have worked with them. Uh, he knows that I have been in the Child Protection Alliance for over six years. Uh, Bakari. In fact, I was the treasurer uh, for most of the time I was at the CPA within the board. I am also concerned about vulnerable children. Uh, we see that even with disabled people, you go to the traffic light, you have children going with them. Uh, that's a serious issue that needs to be tackled. What I can do is I will have a unit within the Canopy Municipal Council to deal with people with disability and vulnerable children. That is already part of my plan. We will do a sensor. Because I checked the records, but what the sensor is saying, 10% of, of, of the population there, they have one form of disability or the other. And the biggest one is eye problem. We need to do a proper sensor of those people who have disability in this country, in, in, within KMC. And we will give a tax concession to any of the companies that will employ disabled or people that are disadvantaged. You need to have best practices. Like the GSM companies, they have engaged some of them. 
we'll encourage other companies to do the same. And once they do the, the, the same, we'll give them tax concessions. Secondly, access is key. We cannot do anything about those, comfort, those, those buildings that already exist. Most of them are already exist, and to put some facilities there may be problematic. But we will encourage anyone coming with a new design to work with the physical planning office so that disability uh, uh, access is an issue that needs to be tackled with, uh, within all the public buildings. Well, thank you so much. Who have filed your rights better among us, other than the human Gambia human rights for your one So you say you are nominated councillors yeah, yeah. to represent different sections of society. So I'm the woman, woman councillor who want to represent women's affairs. So I think, uh, like the saying goes, who get Nancy Mel. So we have to empower people in disabled society and maybe change the laws to allow a nominated councillor from the disabled or to create a committee where disabled can come and talk about their rights and come and fight for their share of the world. You've got to pay your people there and talk to them. You know what disabled is coming because one at a white and white. Disabled, as you think, pack up your brain of work, why don't you make your brain work? You know what I'm saying? Good share. Nakale, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to have the new board of the American. But Mount Jumai, Yari Jumai. Now is the time. Since time is much better now, uh, we have more opportunities now. Whoever sits there, especially you know, I mean, experienced person like me, 
We will welcome them to come and you know, take their part you know, in the decision making process you know, I mean, at Gansu and share, you know, I mean, first hand info with them. I think rather, you know, I mean, like I said, this is a top approach that we will take towards, you know, managing, you know, I mean, this, you know, I mean, municipality, because that's the only way it can go forward. So we will bring all these, you know, I mean, associations of visually impaired, hard of hearing and all that, soul and others, you know, I mean, into our midst and let them take, you know, I mean, part in the discussions and in the preparation of this, I mean, you know, solutions to mitigate their circumstances. And for, you know, the general public to implement or institutionalize, you know, I mean, areas that they can use comfortably. We have been talking about that. And in some areas, you know, if you go around, you know, the municipality today, you will see that. You will see, you know, I mean, you know, the person in the wheelbarrow or wheelchair going around. When he comes to the door, there are two sides. There is a, there is a staircase and there is, you know, I mean, a smooth, I mean, you know, landing, you know, I mean, area. So in that sense, I also add my voice, you know, I mean, you know, to the enthusiasm that is being, you know, I mean, you know, put on this bill. Thank you. Because I said it when I was doing my presentation that the manifesto of my candidate have captured people, differently able people. He has indicated that in his manifesto that he's going to address their problems and not only addressing their problems by asking them what's their problem, but also by nominating a councillor among them who will represent them at council. I said it during my presentation. So, which means to say, my candidate. He's already of faith. I said earlier, he's a, an experienced person. He has worked you know, as a councillor for 10 good years. He has also rose to the last of the permanent secretary. Now he's secretary one. He got experience, he's got knowledge, and he knows the actual problems of this community. And he has come to them. I said earlier on, this manifesto is here, it's all inclusive. I said it earlier, and this is what I've already been addressed by my country, my, my Ashkan country. Thank you. And in addition to that, I want to make also one correction said by the National Assembly member that the minister approves the budget of council. Minister don't approve the budget of council. The budget of council is approved by a council. The only what the minister does is to observe the budget. Kind of the minister observes the budget within 90, within 60 days. After his observations, he sends his comment back to the municipal council and general council is convened to approve the budget. And you go by the dictates of the uh, observations of the minister. That's provided in section. As part of the process of the budget process, from section 8 to section 12, is all included in the Thank you. This guy, man, how am I not going to get it? No, no, no. This guy is coming. Keep it direct. Keep it direct. Here. Here. Yeah, but he's been here in the morning. He's a journalist, so give him chance. Right, just, give, just give anyone you want. This is his side. All right, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to you all. My, my name is Lamy Sedigan. I want to ask this question to you guys regarding campaign, uh, campaign financing. Because we understand that it's illegal for foreign uh, uh, investors to intervene in our project, particularly within this municipality. Who is financing your campaign? That's my question. Thank you very much. Hello. <laughs> The APRC party is funding its candidate from their own source, and the candidate himself is also putting some money on the table to fund his campaign. Thank you. My good people, myself, my brothers, the diaspora, the Mendes, you know, the Majagos, and, and all the you know, 
My people support us, sympathize us. My people. Oh, got me money. What I got me? I need to change the mask. Support us, sympathize us. My people. Well, I'm having proxies of finances coming from my people, myself, supporters, sympathizers, and well wishers. Thank you. I have been supporting my own campaign until the nomination, which now is being supported by UDP. Well, thank you. Um, personally, I am involved in financing myself, my good friends, and my comrades from abroad who have been advocating <laughs> like a fine gentleman I'm looking from here. They've been giving their $10, 20 to support a cause to give KFC a better start. This is why they are chipping in their $10, $20 and I really appreciate their donations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's part of our party principle that no funding comes from an external source that is not that <laughs> coming from outside and not being a Gambian source. That's known. Since 1986, we have funded our own selves, mainly from party sympathizers, supporters, and people who tell us all the time. It can be even people, different people even from the market. Hey, Mundara. Lo Amre. Bure. Nyari So, you get your phone. accept that from a foreign country. For simple. Attention, attention, Who is funding this campaign? Thank you. I'm the one funding my campaign with few friends. Very, very few friends. Well, the last one is the same. Uh, my, my campaign is funded by the people that put me up. Uh, and those are ordinary men and women of the Gambia, uh, both in the Gambia and in the last one. Question <laughs> 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 Oh my god. I'm not um uh some of my fancy. No more gum name on our book is the forward, no response of small cafe. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. So, can anyone be specific? Uh, why was this person asked? Do you have anything specific that you asked? Yeah, that's all. That's all. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes, I am Mutar Sisi. Mutar, yes. Yes, fundamentally, every candidate is doing the ordinary government politics. That is, to say, I will do this, I will do this, I, I will do this. But there is no, but there is few among them that are giving us the strategies exactly. in which it is going to be done. Exactly. Exactly the huh? point. So we need to know what strategy are they going to use. Exactly. For to say, I will close the Bakote Dom site. What strategy are they going to use in saying, I am going to do X, Y, or Z? That is question one. Question two. Question two. We have not heard from any candidate that talks about transparency. You know, now in KMA, people have lost a lot of confidence in KMC. No, so you because whenever you talk of KMC, people <laughs> really have something to say about it. What strategies do they have? that they will put in place so that people will have faith in KMC with the gas for transparency. Okay. Thank you for both platforms. Then we start last time. Then we start from Papa. Papa, transparency. How are you going to be as transparent as glass? Lawrence is saying people have lost confidence in the KMC. So if you are not the mayor, um, thank you very much. That's a very good question. Um, transparency is very important. Um, uh, in my earlier discussion, I mentioned operational efficiency. More the council will be The talking hold on noon. Um, uh, good governance is important. And one of the areas we have the transparency um I'm more not only collective. Man who have not some previous interview, um some other mechanics, if talk new whole at the moment, we have to look at ways of paying directly to the through the bank. But we have an important. Um the one another example. Um uh Jason Master, so then set um annual New York Times. It's more than two hundred million store um uh I'm store. Low look economic the other thing that happened in the working government that full transparency is more than that. If you don't fall, you can do your pay through the bank, and then because every single person can know what I'm giving the number, and if you need the number, you can pay through the bank. Those are very common, they don't have any corruption in the world, because as long as money gets transferred, you can pay your money. So one area. The other area is, the market is not going to be a market. I don't have any energy. I don't have any money. Every day I get it. I don't have any money. 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 
But every day, my get called 2,500. Papa, yeah, that's match. It fuck my car. So it fuck me to call them. You call it crazy. How do you empower them? How do you train them? Because the um, transparency is not increasing. I want you to. Lolo Moy on the issue of transparency. Thank you very much. Sa transparency, il y a accountability. Il y a une transparency. 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 Il y a une Processes like for oil. Processes you want to take in place. The new work they get. Low low money strategy. Look at the downside. We now work. This money they they do you know yet? We niyani local government. They just the benefit area. We need move downside. Strategy the more. We know clear downside go. When you are in the PPA, you can see the police. There are companies that you have to pay for management. You can see the legal work, the speciality. You can see that you can see the people who are in the new dump side. You can see that what you are doing is transform it into something else. That's what I am going to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, on the issue of um, transparency, again, it, I think it's um, two issues probably made for us. The first thing, and that is what we have in our agenda, is that um, we're going to look at, earlier I said, that we're going to look at our tax system. And uh, when I was talking about tax system, I said, it's not just the collection, but it's about um, how government money is collected. So our idea is that we need to, to start having a proper accounting system in the council. There are offices where you have accounting system where whatever goes in and comes, uh, goes out and comes in, you can be able to track it. And there, there will be very, probably very limited possibility of fraud happening when you use certain type of accounting system. And also in terms of collection, we know a lot of things will happen in the collection. We want to introduce a system where if you're paying a minimum amount, then you have to pay through the ticket. But if you're paying a, a huge amount, for instance, thousand or more, then you go to the bank and pay it and get your deposit slip and come and get your receipt. So that way there'll be, uh, uh, we will be able to control the leakages that happen in the collection system. And I'm sure that what's supposed to come to the council is coming. And then internally within the council, you have a, a procurement uh, taking place. And also those things, a lot of things will happen in there. And of course, uh, we know there is uh, what they call the GPPA, uh, the Government for the Procurement Authority, they have an app that regulates how uh, councils are, or even government institutions are supposed to make procurement. But we know collector invoices and that's it. A lot of things will happen in there. So we need to have proper systems in place. And those systems need to be built by the incoming council to ensure that the people spend money where it is uh, needed to be. And that also we have an open, every three months our idea is that we will have an, uh, an open town hall meeting where council will be uh, obliged to come and present to the public what has been the income and what has been the expenditure. That we also looking at uh, within our uh, system the, uh, the uh, accounts, business, business accounts. I know in the council it's very difficult for people to walk in there and say, I want to see this thing. Even though the local government act says that, um, uh, the financial act says that uh, council, uh, council be open, but it has been difficult to see. So we want to open a transparent um, uh, council where people can access and request for anything. And that will be our way of accountability, but also being transparent to the people that pay the tax. Thank you.
So, lolo sa pagmere, from na ni tuto ko siyon na transparency na ako. Para kaam kaya ng department mo kami, all media houses, kung kaya ni information, na faalo si konsoli ni provider. Thank you. Nama ba? Transparency. Yeah, transparency actually goes beyond a declaration. Transparency is actually within the Act. Section 30 tells you that all council proceedings they should invite the public to come. So everyone who is within care and also uh, uh, legislative powers, it makes laws. It makes bylaws. So it, it can act rates. But who amongst you have ever known if they act rates? They'll just come and tell you this is the rate to pay. But the law is saying any raise they do in terms of rates, they should inform the general public. They should publish it in the Gazette. They should invite the media houses to know about these rates. But the council has never done that. So transparency is not what we like or what they like. It's actually within the act. It also states that anything that is happening within the council should be publicized. And you have a right as citizens to go and request for them to open they are audited accounts. That's why people are saying corruption. It's because we don't know what the act says. The act says there, is a, there must be an internal auditor at the council. Apart from that, government must audit their books every year. And every citizen has a right to go to the council and ask them to open their books so that you know what is inside. If we do it that way, we will not be questioning transparency. We will know that this is... Thank you so much. Uh, oh, okay. I enjoyed this debate so much. Okay, no and I, um, like the okay. brother just said, it all comes back to what lays the foundation. All the laws need to be looked at. That's why I am here. I want to lay the foundation for this gentleman. But again, I'm going back to when you think about accountability. I'm going to create an office, a public complaints office, an auditor office that is open to the public. And again, just to rectify one of the uh, colleagues here, who bought a secret against Nancy Melby is not the way to go. <laughs> everybody should be in the theater, everybody should not be in the other side. See, I have gone down two political paths to pro project people's agenda. I want to solve your problem. My record is a fighter. Even in office, I will keep on fighting. To arrest the emergency situation of the council. Make sure that Allah, I mean, Hako, your state, but Keller and the Soda Albea Soto, Allah Balitol, Allah Dinkol Konominu Beka Tinya from Bako. What the good days were, Dolbenga Lonne, Dogo and Yantakela, Volatin Nankana, partisan politics, I told Bere Patan. Gambia now is a new environment. Alna Wuli, Nado Kuoke, Volatin Nana Mantra Mutesi Tore, but accountability. Transparency that has been known. The mayor of London is a human rights lawyer. He has one mantra he says, I owe it to you, the people of London, to make sure that your rights are fight. That is why we are here to see you all you have a better KFC. Thank you. Thank you. I know, right? Yeah. You're on your smiling face. I like it. First, no one will have the Vangelin Aspen, no one will have the Vangelin Aspen. So, I would know what I think is best. Second, every transparency is very simple, it's in two parts. One businessman, so they get money, Lulu. Business is an administration. I'm not business but how to make a make six months at a time legally. And I know everything that is going in there because I have installed checks and balances. I have built the institution. 
So it is very important to build KMC, put accountability on. Personne ne l'a tenu. Il n'a pas de problème. 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 Il n'a pas Bien le social work, la majorité des exemples, il faut dire que c'est la couleur. Nous ne pouvons pas dire que c'est un bourreau qui est la couleur. Donc, on y a des gens qui travaillent, nous sommes là, 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 Si vous avez fait, vous avez fait une conférence pour des faits. Si vous avez fait, vous avez fait des faits. 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 Vous avez Dengan local government, nanti tu akan mesti tak cuma bok. Mota village development committee, atau world development committee, bintang world ini serikula. Dengan soal ini apa kena? Nak kalau sini ada bok yang mui, ngai way labo, walau ngai jaga, walau ngai rombeng, walau ngai borong jin, walau ngai bor, walau jigger, walau tau, dan cuma rabo. Ni boleh dance. Ni nyoto ni dapat sini development program for three years. Loya asal Martin ni move forward. Aku benar loya. Thank you. Um, uh, first and foremost, when we talk about transparency, we are, I believe, you know, talking about you know somebody who has been you know in the position of responsibility and accountable, you know, to you know to get the point of no fault. Now, this to have this, when we have to. We have to first and foremost look at the situation properly. Corruption, you cannot fight corruption. You prevent corruption by putting in place mechanisms that will you know, deny the person access to you know, the you know, That's exactly what has to be done. So the people that take these responsibilities have to be capable people who know exactly what they are doing to understand you know the consequence of you know I mean failing to And the next thing is, we have to assess, you know, I mean, you know, the, their place of work. Where, you know, I mean, these entities that are being going to be, that are going to be accounted for, how do they, you know, amount to, and how do they, you know, I mean, you know, uh, how do they, you know, I mean, you know, in, in, how do they, you know, I mean, you know, go about, you know, I mean, in performing, or, you know, paying their rates, or, you know, their levies, you know, or is it the correct kind of levy, or is it a levy, or is it an open door that will be left for the person to come and, you know, I mean, manage? Others have talked about, you know, I mean, banking. Yes, the data, you know, I mean, is okay. Paying to the bank is okay. But how long, how long can, you know, I mean, you know, that be sustainable? It can go for big business. But what about, you know, I mean, you know, the person, the market woman, you know, I mean, you know, on the ground? So we have to put in place mechanisms that will prevent but in the first place too, this staff has to be, you know, motivated. I said it here. I said it here because, you know, I mean, temptation comes only when, you know, you are not, you know, I mean, no being, thank you, you know, when you are not satisfied. Thank you, you Francis. Thank, thank you. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think I will say this again. Um, when I took the podium, I first said, my aspiring candidate is Mara Bojata has 15 bullet points of components on the manifesto. And I talked about capacity building, I talked about transparency and accountability, which is all captured in this manifesto. Because I said this earlier, remember, Osman Rambo Jata is someone who is offended with the legal instrument of government. And he has developed this manifesto, which talks about accountability. He quoted section 30, he quoted section 92 of 107. 
you know, that he's going to make sure that all the provisions that is provided in those instruments, that is the local government act and the finance and audit act, are implemented to the fullest in terms of accountability and transparency, and also improving the structures that are in place, and also improving the systems that are already in place. So these are things that he is very okay with, and he has captured them in his manifesto, and the manifesto is not only talking about the component, but it's also accompanied by strategies and plans of implementation. Thank you. Yes, you people have been there for 22 years. Nothing was done for the dump side. Yeah. What can you do now again? Um, thank you. Um, looking at the manifesto developed by Usman Rambo Jato Jata, his plan is to transform the rocky downside um, by providing machinery that can transform the waste into energy. Because these are one of his plans. He knew that the government have made a lot of efforts to transfer the bank dump which was not possible because of cost involved. And he believed that the only way in order to address this problem as that now is to go into transforming the waste into energy and provide a conducive environment for everybody to live and for the people that live around the environment, that, that, that area. You know, it is embedded in his manifesto and is what it is in his manifesto. Thank you. We have come to realize that, and some of my colleagues have said here, you know, there is no land available here that, you know, you can transfer the dump site. Even if there is, first and foremost, we have to, you know, improve on the people's management efforts of their refuge from their domestic, you know, I mean, area, from their compounds to the dump site. It has been done before. They started, you know, I mean, they started the process, you know, using empty parts. Others were supplied, you know, I mean, with, um, how to call it again, I mean, dust bins and so on and so forth. Now, the next stage, you know, I mean, is the dump site itself. We must have to collaborate, you know, I mean, with certain institutions and by extension, you know, the government in the first place. What we have done, you know, what we have done, you know, I mean, on the dump side, to be able to transform it in that way before, was to collaborate with gang works. And we were able to achieve the pleasant side that, you know, everybody saw, you know, I mean, in the past years. The next point is, try to find an alternative for the long-term future, and that is to put in a record, you know, a recyclable, you know, I mean, a recycled plant over there. A recycled plant of any form that, you know, we can put there. Check the mine. Yes. Mr. 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 Okay. The next point is there towards the future. And this is the recycled plant, which we have all talked about. Thank you very much. I think uh, if we mention about waste, yeah, so not only, uh, like I said earlier on, we have the solid waste, we have the liquid waste. And both of them are problem today as far as the municipal is concerned. It's true that the solid waste is a main eye shock today, but the liquid waste, I think, it needs to be addressed also because the municipality is becoming bigger and bigger. More people are coming, more constructions are coming. Uh, today, I think what we need to do is to have a sewage system because actually we are looking at Kodu. Kodu there, it was meant for the industry, uh, for the hoteliers, but unfortunately it's disturbing the environment also equally like that of Barbode. So the world of Barbode, we have problem of uh, uh, collection. 
transportation and disposal. These are three segments that we have to look into. And council have to look into those things. We, uh, as far as tobacco is concerned, we need to have an immediate action and a long-term uh, action. We will be able to solve the problems. But also, we cannot do it alone. As far as that process is concerned, we have to team up, make sure that we involve the private sector because they are equally involved in the collection sector. We also have to involve other agencies like the national environmental agencies, you know, groundworks and, and, and so forth, and even central government, so that they can inter we can intervene together. And as far as technology is concerned, I think nowadays technology is at our doorsteps as far as IT is concerned. We will be able to find the most appropriate technology so that we will be able to address this issue as soon as possible. But the dump site should be uh, secured so that at least at that area, for the disposal area, it will be sorted out, security, so that warning will not happen again. And uh, so that thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, as the saying goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Uh, Bakote Domsa is a failure in long-term planning. Um, as we speak, there's a school right opposite. There's a hospital right opposite. There's a community that surrounds it. I myself have a land there and I will build within the next two years. So Bakote Domsa cannot be managed. It cannot be left there. The big question is, if not Bakote, then where? Because KMC has no land. It is one of the smallest municipalities by land mass, 76 kilometers square. It is uh, densely populated. Anywhere you move the dump site within KMC, you are affecting a community. So the big test here is how we can develop intermunicipal relationships, how we can discuss with bigger municipalities to see if they can accommodate a dump site that takes care of KMC waste and even PCC waste. Uh, I think this is going to be the crucial test. But it is not a dump site that can be managed or let be because it is affecting the health of community members. And uh, my plan is in the shortest period possible to discuss with the inter-municipal community, uh, committees to ensure that this dump site is relocated to areas with more landmass. Thank you. Pertinent question. Um, the fact that the top side is an issue. First of all, my first policy within the um, three months or 100 days in office, I will make sure it is fenced by a wall so that it will not be a psychological effect. When you pass through that dump site, looking at it, you get sick. So I will make sure in office, you will make sure it is walled. And then from there, Yes, to make sure that you won't see it because it's a psychological effect. Passing through there, you see how the dump site is, you know that definitely it takes you home. How can people, you know, live around here? How can this dump site be managed? But most importantly, from up in office, I will make sure that the collection of waste resources in terms of the truck, compressor trucks that, you know, compress waste from our homes at least three times a week. Uh, in, in each ward, then it goes from collection to the back of the dump site. Separation will happen, plastics aside, mm -hmm. metals aside. Then we will also explore with the stakeholders the issue of incinerators, waste to, I mean, energy management issues. But again, we have to be realistic here. The back of the dump site, that waste to, my, I mean, energy is a huge amount of money. A small incinerator will cost you $12 million. An incinerator plant will cost you more than $100 million. So we know that we side. But in the short term, I will make sure I'll engage the stakeholders. We will make sure that we have a stakeholder conference looking at how to make sure the waste is being managed. But finally, to tell you that from there, the long-term goal is that to make sure a future mayor will look into how we can acquire that fund so that you know we can close the dump site. Thank and again, you. finally, thank um, you. Thank yeah, you one minute answer. is to, my one minute is there. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, don't be deceived by your one minute people. Is gone. Politics. Your one minute is gone. What is this? <laughs> <laughs>
But my position is we need to do it urgently because we have not checked the, the, the amount of the impact this dumb side is having, the disease it has caused, the escalation of asthma and other things. We've not done a research on that. So it's urgent. We should not wait now. I have done a lot of research on the back of the dumb side. I have been to the Ministry of uh, Environment. I have been to local government. And they all tell us the same story. The story is there is a company right now that is working with government so that they can actually recycle the waste and turn it into energy and sell it to them. That's what we are told. But it has not started and we are still suffering from the smoke. We were told that there is a plan B and the plan B is they will actually demarcate the, the, the place into zones and they will dump in one zone and then move gradually like that. And they will control the fumes by actually engaging the fire service so that any time the fumes come, the fire service will come and put it up. But that is not happening. The fire service, the la every time there is uh, smoke going out. So for us, especially us living around there, I live in Koroli, we have the impact, those in Bakote, it is urgent. So if I am male, that is going to be an urgent priority. Do you know that every citizen in KMC produces point 44 kilograms of waste per day. So that is 168 metric tons of waste. So this is a difficult issue. We have to be pragmatic. We must engage central government in this. We can't, the KMC does not have the capacity to do it alone. We have to engage the central government. Thank but you, thank you, Adama. It is thank urgent. You. We need it now. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think? Yes. How are we going to improve waste management in the case? Okay, first, my plan is, my plan one is, I will force sensitized support. You know, use the media houses. For one thing, you don't go waste. You minimize it. Because all the ladies carry, you know, come to more people. You know, you know, you know, you see what's the day, the property. The rest is important. Obviously, you know, it's all from foreign countries. I'm going to have the gun, they're going to go here. So folks in the United States, especially the Gary, you don't want to go to you go and buy bread, because newspaper you use here, the code you do is you want to see them to actually go in. You don't want to go to the city, you don't want to go to the city, you don't want to go to the city, in a sense. That's number one. Uh, number two, you don't want to go to the uh, moose is another waste. So for my for my plan is minimize waste. Two, my facilitate crop and more facilitate for transportation, green bags, green bags, that's number two. Number three, more partners. Thank you. And to start with the, the issue of the back of the dark side. I think it's, yes, it's a concern. It's a concern to everybody, not only those who live in Bakwate, but uh, the general the municipality in general. And now uh, we've talked about this. That's, uh, there is no negotiation with regards to whether the back of the dark side should be closed or not. I think the, the, the general answer is yes, the back of the dark side should be closed. The issue is how and when. And for me, it, um, like I said all the time, it has uh, to take two folds. The first thing is the capacity the council doesn't have right now to be able to move the back of the dog side. And certainly you need to get a, a place where you move it so that uh, in the next 15, 20 years, you wouldn't face the same thing that is affecting the people of back body. So it, there's a whole lot of work that needs to be done. And the best way is to get people who are experts to come and do a proper study and say, okay, this is what we think we can do. In the meantime, uh, the back of the dump side can be used, but managed in a way that um, you will be able to control the fume that comes out of it. 
and then uh, in the long term move it out to a place where you wouldn't have to be so people and all that. And then the issue of the, the recycling comes in because the reality is we're talking about employment creation and all these things. Uh, the back of the dumps are, or dumps are refuse in general could be employment creation for, for people who are unemployed. Because if you have to go into recycling, you know you need somebody who is going to sort um, what is recyclable and what is not. And you also can go into creating manual and all these things. All that depends on the creativity. And it's time for Gambia also to explore the scientific means. We've been using the manual for a long time and it's time that we look at other means by having experts to come and look at it. And and like I said, it's not just KMC. It's KMC and central government must also take responsibility. This is an issue that has been on for a long time and it's important that KMC work with the central government and other councils to come and support them in terms of getting this out. Yeah. Uh, finally, the issue of uh, refuse, we agree that... Uh, right, thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moralejo. I think this is the second time we are addressing the domicile issue. Uh, I just want to say that people who were managing the KMC for the past 22 years, don't they have any sympathy for the people who are living around the long side? It's very difficult to uh, live around the area. And yet, people were paying taxes and they did ignore. That's not fair. Secondly, is that uh, land belongs to central government, all around. The central government is also very serious in uh, taking care of the problem of backwater. By this time, they should have identified the place <coughs> where we can move a new dump site and close this present one for the time being. Uh, I want to say something about three aspects. We are good at talking and zero at implementation. To conceive an idea will take us six months. To produce a project document will take us another six months. To prepare the tender and award the tenders will take another six months. So by the time uh, we are on the project implementation, a lot of people have died due to health complications. Another thing which I want to uh, mention here is that uh, I have observed that drugs are very expensive in this country. If you are a bad waller, pharmacy, you you can get a pharmacy, 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 a a is a government company managed by pharmacists. Nyom, 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 no? Because the, the, the money was short. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And thank I gave so, a lot of time thank for, for, thank you, for thank orders. You. But let me, let me finish. No, we have to come to that. Let's stick to the time. We'll come to that. You'll have to know. Then you have to reallocate. Thank you. Papa the time that I had. Yes, Papa <laughs> Jai. All right, thank you. This is the first time you stopped me <laughs> since we started the debate. No worry. And we everybody want, is in We want to be fair. Thank you. Thank you. Waste management is a countrywide problem. And I would uh, like to look at it at um, uh, three, 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 three different cases. Very important. The first place. Which is very important. Is that um, we have to start um, uh, looking at this as a business. We have to get the uh, private sector to get involved in waste. We cannot continue to wait for government to come and um, uh, put up the um, recycling plants. KMC should get up and make sure that the, uh, the private companies come in and then they start the process. Um, that's um, uh, already. There's also recycling done at a very um, minimal level. Where last time when I was um, watching one of the talks, I uh, already saw the uh, collector was separated plastic, uh, bottles and everything separated. Why can't we train that person to go to the next level? Um, uh, because we can um, get toilet papers from uh, the paper, plastic, uh, paper being recycled and uh, we can um, get the tires. I, I, when, I went, when I went to the trade fair, I saw a young lady who was using the uh, tires to um, create um, some building furniture. We get those young people, train them so that we can start cycling at that um, uh, level. But oh, 
But also, we have to start educating people at the household level. That's a million term a plan. We have to educate people how to separate waste. We have to tell them why is it important to uh, separate waste. If we start separating waste from that uh, household level, eventually uh, the waste that gets to the dump side would be low. I mean, uh, my colleague mentioned um, uh, composting, that's a manure. It's doable. You do it and then you can sell it to the uh, gardeners. And um, uh, one of the areas that I think um, we get a lot of waste from is the market. Um, uh, just an example, um, uh, the, the fish meal that uh, the ladies throw away, why can't we get, get those small boys who are in the market with the wheelbarrows for them to collect the waste, the, 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 the fish meal, take it somewhere, dry it, pound it, and then export it. Thank Simple you. business. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now we go back to the audience. What is Peter discussion? You will agree with me that it wasn't a waste of time coming here and listening to these great minds speak. So now it's your turn to engage them again. Jero, can we, can we have from this end? You've forgotten the back benches. Ah, no, 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 no. This is an inclusive debate. Everybody is welcome. Come to the back then. What, what was the last one? You started there? Come here. Can we give the ladies? Can we give the ladies a chance? Yes, let's, let's be gender sensitive. Please, direct to the point. Direct, no personal ideas, please. No personal statement. Direct to the point. Anyway, Mang and Nago, you will hear me talk to you, especially the high table. How to represent the electorates of KMC, Manglenan, you didn't know what you did. You knew you smoke all the things, how many of you talk to you, Flo, the other thing. I'm going to talk to you about KMC, transparency, and how to strategize things when you guys are there. And I think what I am going to say. And I think what I am going to say here, we have two or three people that are at the high table and they can witness, they all, they can understand what I want to say. KMC, that's why I'm system for Hamnet, that's Phoenix, Amani Dega, these aspiring candidates, most of you are talking on that. Why Lulu is already in KMC, man, I am a revenue collector for 15 good years. There are people sitting here who knows that. KMC, that's why I'm transparent. Learn about the problem, we know that we are strategizing KMC for about transparency. And Lulu, it goes back to the community. Because the community with them, I'm time for family. They go there all day, go time for collection of revenue. And that is at the beginning of the year. So I have a lot of people who are in the house, 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 you can collect billions. So if you are strict with your collection, you can collect billions. Why is it that you have time for billions to be in the house? So you can come to the house and promise that you can collect the KMC. It's not there. Because the community is so that you can pay for it. You can pay for it. What do you say? Transparency. KMC. Then I'm auditors, you know, they are in KMC, they audit, and then after central audit will come from central government, you new, new, new audit lab. But for each and every collector, either market or license or rates or anywhere, go on the young budget form, go on the part of the KMC. You don't know, I'm it's very authentic because the young Amir Saki are young Amir Saki cast book. Slow collect, no job, we need a job and go with the one in the Lila for the Chadel for audit. So one talk, Nani. So you want the transparency I'm with KMC, no one is political. So if you get for start electorating, then you want to handle it. It is very correct. Then you don't need to take any reason to handle it out of it. At the end of the day, you don't want to convince when you go to it. So I put on the transparency I'm with Lolo Man Nangoma. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is Bob uh, Esken. I'm going to start the um, uh, First of all, I want to uh, clap for the candidates of Chamber. Start with you. So, to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I see leaders sitting in the, on the high table. 
And uh, us who are supposed to elect them, we have to be very careful because this is a small country, you know, and we are not enemies at the end of the day. Sure. This is just politics. The purpose. Okay, you know that they heavy, you know that they are you know that they are dead. So let them mind to undertake and let them. So when we observe from the, there are a lot of reactions. What you say, ki wa he, ki le wa le le. So let them undertake and macho. So the question I want to ask them. When you are elected in office, that's going to be in May. Um, June, July is rainy season. What exactly do you have for the people? Because we all know that there is a problem during the rainy season. There is flood, water enters into the houses, the gutters are locked. So we have a problem during the rainy season. What exactly do you have? Plans for when you get into office and when rainy season. Okay, we'll put it to them. Let them answer that one first. I think what he was trying to say is disaster management. Yes, how to prevent such things happening. Plus, clothes and all that. Yes, yes, because we don't have land. <coughs> I'm telling you, um, Bobo is uh, my very important question. Um, the first thing that we need to do, um, uh, so when I talk to you in May, then we have to have a uh, gas cutter, a um, uh, gutter, you clean that. But you need to clean it, we don't have to buy it, but I'm going to have to cut go remove. If it, if it means we're going to get a private contractor, put it up, load it up immediately. So far, we were at a point that we were sure that you could, you know, it's about Kalisa, DJ I help level your people are the existence because the Dukoma is a problem. Those are the short term solution. Long term solution, why not? If from the town planning, from the plan, KMC, they call a plan, I couldn't get this Pala development in Nika, Pala car parks, you were in Nika, Pala Lunaka, you were in Nika, 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 you ignore_time_segment_in_scoring yeah, thank you. Um, I think the, the thing is, obviously, if you inaugurated in June, June actually is raining season, so I guess that's a very negative thing that anybody can do if you're going to be truthful. But uh, planning forward, I think uh, the best option is um, that we, we know we have an engineering problem here. Uh, all of these... Um, Flood that we have is because of two things. It's because our canals are not good, uh, and secondly, people have settled in waterways. So this is what we need to look at. What are we going to do to ensure that those who settle in waterways uh, come up with scheme that can either move them out or see how best we're going to arrange it. And the second thing is for the municipality, municipal development, the national road authority, and every all the stakeholders to sit down and, and plan this for properly, so that you can have very good drainage system. ตัวเมนเทนเวอร์ตัดโดนเสียเลยสมัยผู้บริการนี่ศาสตร์มานิเมนต์ I don't think we can solve flood uh, in few months to come. But to be realistic, what we need to do, if you go to buy you, what you have is small gutters and a big, big color. You can even call a canal. If you go to Grand Street, you have a big corner. That's what we don't have in KFC. What we need is a canal, and we know how the water flows. The water flows from Bakote there, from, from uh, Kotu, all the way to Aboko. 
we need a canal that will start from Abuko all the way. But we also have a problem of human settlement. What are we going to do to all those compounds that are blocking the waterway? I mean, these are issues that need to be studied and proper planning be done. We need to replan the KMC. That's what we need. There have not been much planning for the kind of municipality. You go to Bacau and you'll be surprised. I was there a few days ago. Some of the streets, I mean, it's like uh, another slum town somewhere. I mean, all these things need to be done. reaction team that will be on standby working with the fire service. We're going to identify areas within the KMC, the areas that are going to be affected mostly from the backwater side, Igbo Town, Talinde. We have also, I mean, through our tour, we have discovered that these areas definitely because of the landscape. But the most important thing is to make sure that the rapid I mean, reaction team standby to make sure that if households are to be flooded, people can be moved to another upper level. But the other thing that we have to do is to unlock the pipe, the, 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 the man, that is the goddess, and also, you know, look at areas where we can put sand or gravel things so that, you know, things will be left. Thank you. 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 I think one of my colleagues rightly answered, uh, there's not enough time from the uh, time to win the elections to the time you get inaugurated to do much. But what you can do is to work with the interim mayor and make sure that by the time you get into office, you just get on the ground running. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the short-term plan is what you're asking, is uh, if you go to Bata, all the waters are full, is to dig them out. There's major holes like the Latin and the other people. It's one of the most uh, disasters so, you know, so I think uh, we need emergency relief funds from the central government to make sure that at least we can have a uh, many situations to deal with. Thank you. Ah, uh, so development work. I know that uh, development is a process. It's an ongoing thing. But actually, as far as the budgets are concerned, I think what we need to do first and foremost is to make sure that we involve the people, sensitize them, so that they will be prepared for any eventualities as far as uh, calamities are concerned. Secondly, I think actually there is a drain tank at the KMC. So I think there needs to be alert, and they are already alert so that they can unpack some of these uh, drainages and waters. Uh, the third one is. Uh, the planning aspect, that is the long-term process, so that we can plan, because the eyes need to plan our city properly, to involve our people like I said earlier, so that engineers, technicians, environmentalists, they can be on board, so that we can plan and Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would add my voice, you know, I mean, to what my colleagues have already said, you know, on an emergency, you know, I mean, uh, Nature, I think we need to just open up the gutters. You know, um, grade, you know, some of these streets, you know, I mean, are uneven. And, you know, by grading them, you know, to, by landscaping them, you know, I mean, you can get a better, you know, feel of them without having, you know, I mean, to uh, engage in dumping any other, you know, um, uh, stones or whatever. Because it also takes money to get these things that you have them. Even nowadays, when you the building is pulled down, you know, I mean, it is gathered to be sold again. So, this is also, there is also my concern on these waterways. Something has to be done, you know, to bring about, you know, the necessary authorities around the table, you know, to talk about, you know, finding ways to open these waterways. Because without the water having anywhere to go, you know, it will only, you know, I mean, destroy whatever has been, you know, laid in its way. And what happens here is, when you look at the area, you know, I mean, uh, from Kotu to Abuko, or even beyond Abuko, where the water is coming from, has almost been, you know, filled back and settlements, you know, I mean, no place on it. Just here, you know, before, 
around us here, you know, by the you know, feeding station. I cannot, you know, remember when. Francis, Gomez, thank you very much. Thank You're welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, just want to add my voice to what some of um, the speakers have obviously said earlier on. But looking at the manifesto that is before me, developed by Usman Rambo Jata, he talked about um, the disaster risk reduction plan that is already established by Council, where hazard profile has already been conducted, which talks about mitigation and um, long-term plans of addressing those problems. So he wants to look at the plan, activate it by re uh, reactivating structures on the ground because every ward is um, every ward has a structure or disaster management committee, and there is also a disaster coordinating unit that he wants to use to make sure that you know risk, um, 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 so that which he wants to use to make sure he addresses the problem of um, disaster when it comes to during the rainy season. And then he has long-term plans which addresses the issue of infrastructure. We talk about infrastructure, talking about roads, construction, but goes along with proper drains. These are all what he has in his plans, which he can do, which he's going to do with committees thank you, thank you, that have been established. Thank you, thank you, you know, that he's going to establish through the council. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Make some small.